Hi everybody, welcome back to Ushanka Show. So let's get our show going again. And remember, this is not Babushka, this is Shapka Ushanka. Uh, so anyways, uh, talking about stereotypes and stereotypes related to Russia and Soviet Union, we have to talk about vodka. And in fact, the first thing about vodka, it's not really vodka. All the Russians always say vodka. And this is the reason why, because we don't have two V's in the Russian language. We have only soft V. So, it's a classic example of any Russian person or person from Soviet Union would be saying vodka. The only people who understand that are Polish people who made this beautiful vodka vodka. This is how it's supposed to sound, vodka. So, anyway, uh, speaking of uh, uh, vodka and stereotypes, the first thing that comes to my mind uh, about stereotypes is the old movie Moscow on Hudson. Uh, that part where the old guy in Moscow opens the refrigerator and the whole fridge is stacked full of vodka bottles. This is so not true, it's not even funny. Uh, main reason, of course, what the point to keep all your vodka in a refrigerator. Russian refrigerator is really tiny, so it, space is really precious to keep the stuff that can go bad. Vodka don't go bad sitting in the room temperature. And in fact, Russians don't mind to drink room temperature vodka. We don't put ice in our vodka because you dilute the product. So that's the first thing I always was uh, giggling seeing that scene uh, that fridge will be stacked full of vodka. And of course the second movie I can think of is the old, another old movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Red Heat. And that one is kind of true when uh, he was asked about how do you relax and Arnold answers vodka. We don't look at the fish tanks and the fishes swimming in there. We just use vodka to relax. Just out of curiosity, and uh, since I figure cops are cops the world over, uh, how do you Soviets deal with all the tension and stress? Vodka. So this is kind of like classical American stereotypes about vodka. So let's talk about vodka. Uh, back in Soviet Union, uh, there's not a lot of varieties of vodka. Of course, we all think right away about Stolichnaya or how you guys call it here, Stoli. Uh, Stolichnaya, proper way would be to translate it as the capital vodka because Stolichnaya, it means it came from the capital. So that's a capital vodka and it's like most famous Russian vodka you can think of. But unfortunately right now, I don't think it's even Russian anymore. It belongs to the company out of Lithuania or Latvia. Uh, that brand is not Russian anymore. And also there were other kinds of vodkas you could buy in Soviet Union. And there was uh, Pšenichnaya, which made out of wheat pretty much translates. Then Ruskaya, Russian vodka. And that's pretty much it. Stolichnaya, Pšenichnaya and Ruskaya. And then probably were some local vodkas, but this was like uh, all lower country brands. And another thing I can remember was a Zubrovka, which is like a buffalo um, vodka, which had some uh, herbs. Actually, speaking of Stoli, uh, there's a kind of like urban rumors uh, stories going around uh, how Stolichna vodka ended up in the United States in the middle of the Cold War. You would think like that point of, uh, point of time when we had all these conflicts going on, Cuba, Vietnam, uh, Germany, Eastern and Western Germany. Uh, how come you guys suddenly had a Stolichna vodka showing up on the shelves? Well, the rumors are that um, uh, during the visit of Khrushchev, uh, Nikita Khrushchev to the United States when he met with Kennedy, uh, he was introduced to Pepsi. And he really liked that uh, soda or pop. So eventually they made the decision to open like five or six factories to make Pepsi in Soviet Union. And in exchange, they were started shipping vodka 
Stolichna vodka to United States and getting back the Pepsi concentrate. So this is how uh, it started, how you guys got the Stolichna vodka to the America and we got Pepsi. All I remember during Soviet Union in the 80s and 90s we only had Pepsi and that was just a regular Pepsi and a little bit later we had Fanta, that orange pop. Uh, was no Coca-Cola whatsoever. Coca Coke came uh, later after the Soviet Union collapsed. During the Soviet Union, Pepsi was the only American drink that you could get um, in USSR. Now back to vodka stories. Uh, interestingly, most vodka, in, you know, it's a standard size. Um, this is actually bigger, it's 750 milliliters. Uh, normal size of Russian vodka, it's a half of a liter, 500 grams. And by uh, long like scientific experiments and tryouts and all those things, uh, people figure out that the best uh, idea of partying with one bottle of vodka is to split it on three people. And it's so-called na traich, butilka na traich. So if three people uh, will gather and with one bottle of vodka, that'll be fun. Less than three people, that's too much vodka. People can get sick. If you have more than three, uh, then it's not enough vodka to really get it going. So there's a lot of jokes, uh, a lot of humor in Russia about uh, these people who are trying to find the third person. So they want to party, they got a bottle, but they're looking for the third person to join them so they can uh, uh, start drinking. And it's a lot of jokes about it. Um, uh, that was the question, can you be our third person? Uh, will you join us to be the third? What? <laughs> Ну, Фоня, не люблю я таких людей, не пунктуальных. And there's a lot, there's a lot of different uh, technologies how to drink vodka. We do not mix usually vodka with other uh, things like orange juice to make a screwdriver. Uh, now it's changing, but here in Soviet Union, it's just you drink it straight. Um, and of course, you can pour it in a glass, which is a famous granchak. It's a 100 gram stakan that you can fill up your vodka with, or if you don't have it, uh, any uh, cups, then you just drink straight out of the bottle, which they call it drinking from the throat. Because this part of the bottle is like your throat, right? Like your neck, gorla, and it says drinking right from the neck. Uh, and also, interestingly, uh, during the Soviet Union, we had. Uh, the special machines like a, like you have a coke machine so you can buy a coke like one can well that was too much of the <laughs> technology for Soviet Union we didn't make any popping cans so what they did they had machines that uh, you can buy a drink uh, you drop money uh, some change like three copecks and you get a pop and they had the glass uh, cups right there and it's like there's a little wash station so you can uh, squirt some water on your cup, you wash your cup and it's like community cup, right? You wash it a little bit and you, then you fill it up with your pop and you drink it. It was really cheap. Uh, you can buy for one copeck. You can buy uh, just like a fuzzy um, soda only or if you want it with the flavor, it was a three copecks. So guys who were with the bottle and they had a team of three 
quite often they will go and steal one of those uh, community cups uh, from the Gezirovka so they can drink their vodka. And there's a pictures out there on the internet that you can see this Soviet pop machine, Avtomat uh, Gezirovki, uh, and the cops will be chained in order to pre prevent them from being stolen by the team of three, of vodka teams. But also, interestingly, uh, after uh, Soviet Union collapsed and the private enterprises started in Russia and Ukraine, um, uh, some Western banks will provide you credit if you start a business. They don't want you to start business related to making alcohol, so they won't give you any credit for that. But if you, for example, want to make yogurt, uh, you can get uh, credit to open a little uh, yogurt factory. As a result, we had this for a couple of years, we had some smart people, they started uh, packing vodka into the yogurt cups. And that was the famous uh, jokes again, the Russian yogurt is pretty much vodka and the clear yogurt caps cups and it was really handy because you know now you don't have to run around with the bottle half a little bottle looking for two more bodies to drink now you can just buy a yogurt or two Russian yogurt and you're a happy person and that was so bad uh, that they outlawed the Russian yogurt you can't buy yogurt anymore in that form so that's another pretty interesting story about um, how Russians consume vodka uh, also, there's kind of uh, interesting thing to think about it. You can pretty much call yourself a dull person if you remember days when vodka used to be sold only in vodka flavor. Right now, if you go any grocery store, it's insane. It's like, what, 20, 30 different flavors, uh, including bacon vodka, uh, all kind of tutti fruity flavors, even Stoli. They went insane. I mean, salty caramel flavor, what the hell is that? <laughs> it's not vodka anymore. Um, also, I remember uh, from way back, like 1990s, uh, when in Ukraine, there was just a shortage of uh, bottles. You know, usually we have the also recycling program when you can return an empty bottle, you get paid like 10 or 20 kopecks, like 20 cents then these bottles get washed and get reused and uh, there was just shorted of the bottles so desperate uh, liquor factories, vodka factories were uh, started making vodka in three liter big like this pickle jars three liters they were just making them full of vodka and selling it because that's the only way they could make it they just didn't have enough bottles and one time going to college back in Kiev I remember seeing um, this hor horrible picture <laughs> right on the street there was a, a plastic bag torn and this remnants charge of glass of Ruska vodka and I could just imagine what a tragedy happened last night when this happy person was carrying these three liters of vodka uh, home or to the party and bag broke and that big a jar uh, crashed on the blacktop and just broke in pieces and I don't think you could recover anything of the vodka. That was probably a pretty horrible experience uh, for that person. So this is what kind of things about vodka and also uh, always it's a famous 100 grams. Uh, this is a standard amount of vodka people consume. Uh, the standard, I got fancy glass my wife bought, but you know, there's this Granchak, which is 100 grams, that's the size you usually consume of vodka. And um, now I want to show you, I got something really special I keep since 1982, when I was 11. Uh, me and my dad uh, were grocery shopping and they issued this kind of like limited edition of vodka called Drevnya Kievska Old Kiev Vodka and my dad purchased, I believe it was about like five rubles five dollars you would say and I asked my dad not to use it and keep it for my wedding so since I was 11, since 1982 uh, we keep this bottle of vodka in our family but the way things turn out, I end up uh, 
going to America to work in the summer camps on exchange program, um, meeting my wife on blind date and marrying here. So big Russian style wedding never happened, but the bottle, uh, so bottle still intact and I just, I don't know what to do, I just like to keep it, it's probably not good anymore. Vodka don't uh, store really well for long term as far as I know, but it's just kind of the sweet memories of my childhood and uh, just keeping the special bottle. Uh, also right now in Ukraine and in Russia they do a lot of uh, interesting uh, bottle containers, bottles like ceramic figurines and all other things. Uh, for example, this is uh, how they pack uh, vodka in Ukraine. This is a classic Cossack, Ukrainian Cossack. And this is the cap where the vodka is. They also uh, make vodka that looks like ceramic purse. Uh, ceramic AK-47. The most amazing I found uh, was this vodka. Uh, you can guess yourself what it looks like. Uh, it's called salad vodka, I believe. Uh, no clue why. It definitely has some veggies with it, but it looks pretty yeah, interesting. So this is my story about the Russian vodka stereotypes. I hope you enjoy the show. Please uh, like the videos if you do like it and subscribe to my channels. More videos are coming. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Goodbye.